Our lesson this morning is entitled, A Diagnosis of the Soils. And this is the parable that you find in Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. It is a familiar story to all students of Scripture. And it is probably one of Jesus' most famous parables that he ever taught. That he ever taught. Let us go through it again, starting at verse 1. And it says, He began to teach again by the sea, and that's the Sea of Galilee, which is really a lake, not a sea. And such a large, very crowd gathered to him that he got into the boat in the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was by the sea on the land, and he was teaching them many things in parables. Now, a parable is an analogy or a story or an illustration. And he was saying to them in his teaching, listen to this. And this is the beginning of the parable that Jesus taught. And he says, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Other cells of seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. And he was saying, He who has ears, to hear, let him hear. Now we know that from this parable that the sower is every believer and the gospel is that of Jesus Christ. So the only issue that is left for us now is to discuss and to find out the various types of soils that Jesus is talking about. And Jesus is talking about six different kind of soils. Three of them are good, and three of them are bad. Soils represent the human heart. According to Matthew 30, 19, which is a parallel passage, refers to the seed going into the soil as the gospel being sown into the hearts of man. And so we have the hearts that we are going to face as we spread the gospel. And so it is very, very important for us to know the types of hearts that we will face when we talk to people. And the first kind of heart, the first kind of soil that we come across is found in verse 15. And that is the roadside part. Verse 15 says, And these are the ones who are beside the road, where the word is sown, and when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. This is the, the, soil, the seed that falls onto the paths that are found inside the field. The paths that the, the farmer uses to walk around his field, the paths that everybody uses to get between different places. It has been trodden as hard as concrete. So when the seed foil falls on there, there is no response at all. They are described in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 as those whose minds have been blinded by Satan. And Satan comes along. Satan, illustrated as the bird in this parable, he comes along and he snatches away the truth before it even has a chance to penetrate into the ground. Now this is not just any kind of group of people. This is Israel that Jesus was talking to as the hard soil. They are the hard-hearted, stiff-necked, just like their ancestors were. 
He is describing the vast population of Israel. The Jews and also the religious leaders who had rejected him. And Jesus is basically saying to them, For you it is now too late. And the parable later on tells us that Jesus was talking to them in parables and he wasn't explaining it to them. He only explained the parable to his own disciples. So this is a, also a parable of judgment. If it was not explained to them, the judgment was on them because they had ears to hear, but they never heard and they never listened to what Jesus had to say. Jesus is no longer going to cast his pearls before swine. And then you remember the second kind of soil in verse 16 and 17. And in a similar way, these are the ones in whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have the root in them, firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. Then when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. We need to be ready for temporary converts. These are shadow responders. These are false converts who respond emotionally without counting the cost. Selfishly seeking personal satisfaction. They are the kind of people who say, I certainly want that. I want Jesus if he can take care of my life. If he will forgive my sin. And if he will take me to heaven. But it is all self-centered. What can I get out of it? Now false conversions like this happen all of the time. And the issue is not people who don't believe in Jesus Christ. There are lots of falsely converted people who would tell you that they believe that Jesus lived. They will tell you that they believe that Jesus died. They will tell you that they believe that Jesus rose again. Because it is recorded in scripture and it is relatively easy to accept. But what marks false conversion is a failure at true repentance. A genuine repentance. The quote Christian church unquote is full of kinds of people who believe in Jesus Christ. The denominations are full of people who believe in Jesus Christ. James 2.19 tells us that even the devils believe. So what is genuine repentance? Genuine repentance is about the hatred of sin. It is about brokenness. It is about self-denial. It is about repentance. Mere emotions have nothing to do with evangelism. They, the disciples, had seen those kind of people too. They had seen the hard-hearted people who absolutely refused to listen to Jesus. They also knew there had been disciples who had wandered with Jesus for a while and then all of a sudden they had just disappeared. They had seen the kind of people where they, when there is any kind of pressure or anything that they don't believe or anything they don't want to submit to or any kind of persecution coming on the horizon. These guys make like Donald and Duck. These are the false converts, the false disciples. Someone's, if someone's confession does, does not come from a deep desire and a deep confession of Christ 
And it does not come from inner contrition, a desire to be delivered from sin and to come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. A life of self-denial, of sacrifice, of service and even suffering. Then they have no root. And that takes us to the third kind of soil that we find. And those are the thorny hearers, verse 18 and 19. The thorny hearers. And others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word. And the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Thorns in the Greek is the word akanthas. It is actually a thorny kind of weed which is very common in the Middle East and which is often found in cultivated soil. It is the same word used in Matthew 27, 29 of the crown of thorns that was placed on Jesus' head. Now this is what occupies this heart. This is not a response of shallow emotion. This is not a response of self-will driven by self-interest and self-love. This is a double-minded person whose repentance is not complete. This is the kind of person who wants salvation, who wants Christ, who wants the kingdom, but they also want the world. They want riches and everything in the world. He wants to serve God and money. And this is the rich young ruler that Jesus talks about in Matthew 19, who comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, basically, give up all your money and come and follow me, because that is obviously the idol that is occupying your heart. And we all know what happened to that rich young ruler. He turned around and he went away sad because he was not willing to give up all of that. He wanted to hang on to the illusion of his own pride and his own riches. When it says at the beginning of verse 19, the worries of the world, it is literally the distractions of the age. The distractions of the age. Whatever distracts you, these are the thorns in your heart. What ocu whatever occupies your heart, whether it be friends, whether it be parties, whether it be work, whether it be playing golf, whatever it is, whatever occupies your heart besides Jesus Christ, these are the thorns in the good soil. This is the heart that is preoccupied. That is, this is the heart that unfortunately loves the world and all the things that are in the world. And that is, according to 1 John 2, the love of God is not in them. This is the kind of heart that Jesus points out in Luke chapter 9 that says, I am going to follow you, Lord, but I can't follow you just right now. Give me time to go home and get my inheritance that I have money to take along with me. Give me time that I may go home and say goodbye to everybody. And Jesus says to them, no. No. Whoever turns back and looks back, is not worthy and is not fit for my kingdom. 
The gospel calls for a break from the distractions of the age. The deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things. These things choke out the true seed. Is it not amazing to you about the denominations that spread the prosperity gospel that promises all of these things? They promise you the prosperity gospel says you can have all of the world, that all of the world, that the things of the world has to offer you. Everything that you want, everything that you can think of, and you can have Christ. That is a lie. That is a lie. The gospel does not promise us what we want. The gospel doesn't say it will give you riches. The gospel doesn't say it will give you the world. The gospel does not say it will give you everything that your heart desires. It does not say it will give you a new car or a new house, etc., etc. That is a lie. That is like saying it is fine to have weeds in the soil. When we come to Christ, we have to let go of the world, the love of riches, and all of the other things that the world has to offer. You have to deny yourself. Deny all that you are, deny all that you possess. And the Lord will bless you with what He chooses to bless you with. The Lord will give you food to eat and a place to stay. We don't see God's people begging for bread. God says that He will be our provision. So what is the chief evidence of conversion? We have seen emotion, the people receive it with joy. We have seen the quick response. We have seen interest. But speedy response doesn't prove anything. Joy isn't and does not prove true conversion. There are many people who have an emotional experience because they feel they have some feeling induced. Joy isn't the evidence. God is looking for the humble. The sinner renouncing his own independence, his own will, and submitting to the Lordship of Christ. Partial commitment is useless. And then finally, there are people who respond the right way. They are indicated in the final kind of soil, verse 20. And those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. They are the kind of people willing to humble themselves. They are willing to be broken and contrite in heart. This is the good soil, the three types of of good soil that Jesus was talking about. Good soil is not natural. Gabby, good soil, you know this, is not natural. Hard soil is natural. Leave the ground as it is and that is what it will become. Weedy soil, that is natural. Leave the ground the way it is, and that is what you will have. Thorns and weeds. 
Something has to happen to the soil in order to make it good. To make the soil good, it has to be broken up. The rocks have to be taken out. The weeds have to be plucked out. That makes the soil good. And who can do that? Who can make the soil good? Who can make the heart receptive? Only God can. Only God can do that. Deuteronomy 30 verse 6 says, The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart that you may live. Proverbs 20 and verse 9 says, Who can say I have made my heart clean, pure from sin? No one can do that on his own. So what does good, or what does a good soil sinner do? He cries out to God like David did in Psalm 51.10 and he says, Create in me, God, O Lord, what? Create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart. And we will have the benefit of a great new promise when Jesus will give us a new heart. And the best part of the parable that Jesus taught is the last line, where the results are really phenomenal. And they that hear the word and accept it bear fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Remember that in most of Jesus' parables there is a wow factor. And this is the wow factor in this parable. The crop in Israel, the average yield of a crop in Israel is 7.5%. 7.5%. So this point here is simply this, that while you may not immediately see results, while you may think that nothing is happening, while you may think on the surface that things are pretty bad, the disciples have seen the mass of people that have rejected Jesus Christ. They have seen the superficial disciples who come and leave. They have seen those who never want to break with the world and they eventually turn out to be false converts. They see the types of people like the rich young ruler. And they must wonder to themselves, is it ever going to go beyond this? Is it in any time going to get better than what we are seeing at the moment? And here's the greatest part of the parable. Jesus says that the results are going to be supernatural. All the hard ground, all the rocky ground, all of the weedy ground, all of the rejectors of the gospel will not thwart God's divine purpose. In the face of very discouraging early results, they need to know that the Lord is going to do something absolutely staggering. Now the parable is not trying to convey that if you are a 30-year, you should be a 60-year. Or, or if you are a 60-year, you should be a 100. That is not the point of the gospel. The point of the parable. We ourselves cannot determine that. It is simply saying that God is going to do things through us through the lives of His people to build His kingdom. 
Some are going to be less than others. And that is by God's design. The callings vary. 60 and 100. We cannot determine that. That is for God Himself to determine. Soft is the voice. 